could you please put your hands up if you have smartwatch? Anything like for fitness, Android watch, Apple watch, anything. So probably less than the majority. Okay, right, thank you so much. Let's say some people have and some people don't. Smartwatch is a latest technology called wearable devices. We can wear such wearable devices anytime and everywhere. There's lots of functions related to wearable devices. For example, monitor, monitoring our physiological data. Underneath uh, your smartwatch, there is small and integrated sensor to monitor our pulsation from the wrist. Then such recorded signal are automatically translated into your heart rate. Then we can watch our heart rate 24 seven, even during exercises. 20 years ago, we didn't have such small and robust sensing idea from the wrist to monitor our physiological condition. It is heart rate especially for commercialized and consumer level devices. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Takashi Nakamura. I'm a PhD student in electric engineering. As a young researcher, I'm always curious about what kind of technology will come out, let's say in the next 20 years. Since I'm doing research related to brain and technology, I'm curious about what kind of wearable device, especially physiological wearable device, will come out. What if we could record brain signal in the real life? If it is feasible, what kind of benefit we would get? Today, I'm going to talk about wearable brain monitoring in the real life, then I personally believe this technology can facilitate our quality of life, then save someone's life. So to begin with, let me talk about a little bit about myself. When I was a small kid 20 years ago, I was obsessed with science fiction stories. Especially I loved robot and cyborg stories. One of quintessential Cyborg stories is cyber brain. The idea of cyber brain is our brain information are digitized, then saved in the cloud or in hard drive. Then such digitized information are transmitted into robot. Then typically that robot is a human shape. Then the user can control that robot as if their own body. So typically fighting against villains, save someone's life. It's great stories. Years passed, I became undergrad student, came across research area called brain computer interface. The idea of brain computer interface is our brain information is oh yeah, come here. So our brain signal are recorded from scope which is electroencephalography, EEG. Then recorded signal are translated automatically by some sort of mathematical algorithm. Then such information can control, for example, wheelchair. So successful brain-computer interface can uh, interpret our brain. Then we can control wheelchair without using muscles, hands, or sticks whatsoever. Just use your brain to control device. Another example of latest brain computer interfaces directly address our physiological condition, such as our attention level or sleepness. So structure-wise, two things. Cyborg story, I was obsessed. And brain computer interface, it's quite similar. Human brain and some device. Of course, fundamentally, we can't digitize brain itself yet. But this example shows recorded signal from scope have enough information to control wheelchair, for example, 
or directly monitor our physiological condition in the real time, then actually brain monitoring are extensively used in clinic for diagnostic purpose, such as brain injury, concussion, epilepsy, or sleep disorders. However, there are a few problems in conventional recording. First of all, sensors are prohibitive. Then, in order to get good quality of signal, we need to have trained clinician or researcher to attach electrode precisely. So it's cumbersome setup. On top of this, almost all recording are validated and conducted in highly controlled environment such as research lab or clinic. So our research group as an engineer, we are working on three problems. Can we record brain signal? Cheaper, easier setup than everywhere. It's like monitoring our heart rate from smartwatch. Our idea is How about recording brain signal from the ear? It is a wearable solution. So from now on, first I'm going to show you our prototype, our sensor. Then after that, in order to validate our idea, which is recording brain signal from the, from the ear, I'm going to answer two questions. First question. Can we actually get good quality of signal from the ear to monitor our physiological condition? Question two. OK, if we can get good quality of signal from the ear, can we directly monitor, directly address our physiological condition? So let's have a look at our sensor. So here is our sensor. Our sensor is made by foam ear plug then two electrodes are embedded. It costs three to five pounds per year piece. Oh, yeah. First, we apply electrical gel. It's conventional technique. Then squeeze into inside of you. Yeah, that's it, ready to use. So setup time is less than one minute. And as you can see, the sensor is as small as conventional earphones to listen music. So it is small enough to wear anytime. So our idea in ear sensing can overcome three problems I mentioned cost, setup, and the environment. So now let's move on to the question I mentioned in order to validate our research idea, which is record brain signal from the ear. Step one, can we get good quality of signal from the ear to monitor our physiological condition? What we conducted is simultaneous recording with scope, conventional headset, and our earpiece. Recorded signal from scope, there is clear peak from multiple location of scope, which is typical brain response in research. Yeah, clear sharp peak at same frequency. So this example shows from the ear, we can get almost same quality of, good quality of signal compared to conventional headset. Then I mentioned before, brain monitoring are extensively used in clinic. Therefore, we conducted sleep study. If you have sleep disorder, you need to come to sleep clinic, then wear multiple electrodes, including headset. Recorded signal from scalp during your sleep are scored by clinician to get sleep stages. So this sleep stage is a kind of sleep pattern, transition of your sleep. So 
passed out, light sleep, deep sleep, going back to light sleep, deep sleep, dreaming, such transition. And it is standard clinical procedure. Recorded signal from ear are also scored by clinician according to exactly same guideline to conventional study. Then we obtained sleep stages based on inside of ear potential. Agreement between two are 84%. So this study shows step one, can we get good quality of signal from the ear to monitor our physiological condition? Yes, we can. We validate it in sleep clinic, sleep study. And I mentioned, due to the nature of our sensor, which is small enough to wear anytime, it is cheap and also easy to set up, we overcame three problems. So let's move on to the next step. Yeah, if we can get good quality of signal from the ear, can we directly monitor our physiological condition? What we conducted is exactly the same study in clinic. Recorded signal from scalp are scored by clinician. It is exactly the same idea compared to the previous one. Recorded signal from ear are automatically translated by some mathematical algorithm, then predict sleep stages automatically without clinician's help. Agreement between two are 91.8%. So Fitch means this study shows step two. If we can get good quality of signal from the ear, can we directly monitor our physiological condition? Yes, we can. We can automatically predict your sleep patterns from inside of your brain signal, uh, inside of your senses. So now, I hope lots of people are interested in our idea, but I do believe some people are wondering, well, that's cool, isn't it? But the speaker clearly mentioned save someone's life at the beginning. You're absolutely right. Now, step three, can we save someone's life? Let me give you one example. You are driving long period of, period of time. You're extremely exhausted. You're sleepy now. But good news. If you drive 10 minutes more, you will arrive at your destination. In that scenario, would you drive 10 minutes more or would you have a rest? If I were a driver, I would definitely drive 10 minutes more. Because, you know, it's okay, mate, 10 minutes, just nothing happened. However, it is extremely dangerous driving under fatigue and sleepness condition. Then actually in 2011 in France, more than 600 drivers had died in car accidents on straight road because drivers were extremely exhausted and sleepy. Uh -huh. In that scenario, our idea can save driver's life. Before it hits the road, pick up our inside of ear sensor, then squeeze into inside of ear, then start driving. During tedious driving process, our inside of ear sensor can monitor your brain activities continuously, then sequentially translate into your sleep stages. In this context, let's say this is your attention level or your drowsiness. Then once our translator pick up some peculiar brain pattern from ear, which is related to your attention level or your sleepness, we can immediately give some feedback. Hey, stop the car. Your brain is too tired to drive. It sounds weird, but yeah, this is a thing. So stop the car, otherwise you will have car accident. So let me finish my talk. Technology-wise, 20 years ago, we didn't have small, integrated, and robust sensing idea from the wrist to monitor our heart rate. 
But now, people took for granted because we can buy such devices in the shop, easy. 20 years ago myself, I was a small kid obsessed with science fiction. Then now, surprisingly, I'm doing research related to brain and technology. I need to admit, I'm not going to say what I'm doing is building cyborgs yet. However, our idea, recording brain signal from the ear, is cheap, easy to use, and small enough to wear every time, so which is wearable solution. Then I do believe this technology can open up a new avenue in fully wearable 24-7 brain monitoring in the real life. This technology is definitely a crucial parameter for next generation of healthcare. Then I believe in 20 years, this technology can facilitate our quality of life, then someone, uh, save someone's life. Thank you so much.